Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, play fast football. I'm right, going to do a video today on uh, trying to generate tackles for loss on defense and how to be a little bit more aggressive doing some things to generate uh, tackles for loss on the defensive side of the ball. Make sure you check out GameStrat sideline replay system All right, that we use. There will be a link in the description box down below uh, to make sure you check out uh, GameStrat. If you want, click on that link. It takes you directly to their site. If you're looking for a reliable, affordable sideline replay system with great customer service, make sure you check out GameStrat. Uh, Difference USA, which is the ultimate striking machine, we have one in our weight room. Work on striking, thousands of reps without needing a partner, don't need anybody to hold a bag, don't need anybody to hold. All right, a med ball, uh, just need a Difference USA strike machine, need a weight room, need a rack. You can put them outside on the field as well. Ours is going to be inside in the weight room. You're working on elbows in, thumbs up, striking, uh, physically how to do it to get it proficient at striking and also working on some strength development as well. So make sure you check out Difference USA. All right, and then uh, partner back up with Max One, which is an app that allows you to communicate and organize uh, workouts with your team. And in the offseason now, as we get ready to start our offseason workouts, we're looking for more ways than just uh, maybe through, um, through, through huddle stuff that we use. We're looking at more ways to communicate with our team when workouts change. When we're doing things, how we're doing things. If kids can't be there, we want them to be able to have the workout. So check out Max One. It's a great app for head coaches that helps you make your program better and kind of get everything you want from a communication, organization, and workout standpoint all into one platform. So what we're looking at today, I just went back and watched a great uh, 2018 clinic with Kirby Smart at, uh, at Georgia. And, and in the clinic... He talked about, he had some, some different segments talking about tackles for losses and how they researched their tackle for losses and, and what they went about doing to generate tackle for losses. So I'm going to take you through where our best tackle for loss defenses come from in our 3-3 stack and, and why we kind of do the things we do and why we believe in, in those things to generate tackles for loss. So uh, what Kirby Smart did two or three years ago is they went out and they did a study and they studied what generated the, the teams in the country that led uh, – the statistically led in tackles for losses. They were looking at the things that they were doing, and they came away with three or four different things that they were doing. So when I looked at this two years ago or a year ago, at first time, the first time I looked at it, and I rewatched it uh, about a week ago, um, just kind of confirmed some things for us on how we get our tackles for loss. I never really did a study on it. I never investigated. These were things that we carried in our in our package as you know pressure movement deals when we weren't as good as the other team and we had to start moving and doing things. And as a 3-3 stack team, two years ago when we went to the 3-3 stack, we knew we were going to have to move at times. So these are things that we carried as part of our package. And some of them we even carried in a way when we were a 4-2-5 team. So it just reconfirmed my notion of things you need to do to try to generate tackles for loss or get some teams that might be better than you behind the sticks, however you want to look at it. So, you know, one of the first things they talk about all the time is jamming the open B-gap. If you're an even front team, you set the three technique to the back. You know that you got the open B-gap away from the back. So then what you do is you jam the B-gap with a stunt, you know, and, and whether it's a simple inside line stunt or uh, a five-man pressure that you tag to it. But, you know, generally speaking, in a, in a four-man front, if you knew that you had the back set over here and you were going to set the... You know, you're going to set the three technique to the back, and you're going to have the open B gap away from the back. All right, you're going to jam that B gap with the end. You can create some movement in here with a possible stunt there. All right, and then if you wanted to, you can even add the willy up off the edge and go three under three deep or whatever you want to do. But bottom line is trying to jam the open B gap. Well, the problem I have as a three three stack team is in our base front we have two open B gaps. So it's kind of hard. We could jam the open B-gap away from the back because that's the theory, but it's not the same for us. We can't set the three technique away unless we wanted to uh, put the mic in the B-gap for us and uh, you know, uh, to the side of the back. And So we've got to do it some different ways, so I'll talk about how we get there. The first thing that he talked about was they were studying the teams that were using six-man hot pressures or what they call, you know, they call it the coverage eyes. All right, and, and what you were talking about is playing three deep, two underneath, all right, which we've been playing for two or three years now or three or four years now, and I've got some other videos on it. And Kirby Smart talked about why they, why they went to that as a change-up on some downs and originally looking at it and saying, there's no way this is sound. We can't do this. We're outnumbered everywhere. But what they found out was the teams that were leading the country in tackles for losses were using that same premise. They were using six-man pressures, two underneath, three deep, all right, and, and what they were doing 
was they were getting a little bit aggressive depending on the formations they were seeing. And obviously it's, it's better versus some formations. you got to make adjustments versus other, other formations. But, you know, on first down against run personnel, it's really a sound call because you've got, you've got a lot of eyes on the football, a lot of eyes on the run game, okay, a lot of eyes that aren't matching man zone principles, okay. So it's really a good sound theory, you know, and for us it created a lot of movement because, you know, we'd come up on one side and, and we'd walk a stack backer up and bring him in the A-gap, and then we'd cross a mic backer behind him with our anchor off the edge, and then our nose would go away from the stunt, and then we might jam our end in there while bringing that backer off the edge on that side, and then we would end up with our left safety down as we, we called a hot vision and brake player, okay? So he'd be at about seven or eight yards, heels at about seven or eight yards, and then depending, so our right safety was hot vision and brake. So then depending on the formation and where they needed to be, they were guys that were going to sit flat-footed. They weren't going to backpedal. They weren't going to bail. They weren't going to move forward. They were going to sit flat forward until the football declared itself. And if it became anything in the passing game, they were going to melt off the shoulder and the eyes of the quarterback, and they were just going to pull themselves on a string until his hand came off the ball, and then they were going to drive. But what happens in a run game, when you think about TFLs, especially in a run game, is you get a lot of movement up front to disturb the O-line, and then these extra vision and break hot players, they end up becoming overlap guys in the run game because all six gaps up front, especially if you're playing against a, a 11 or 20 personnel team or guys that are removed a little bit, all six interior gaps are plugged, and then you have extra D-gap to fold players on both sides of the ball who aren't dropping into zones or trying to match routes. They're playing off the QB anyway, so they're able to look inside all right, at what's going on here. So any run game you get, you have two extra eyes. Your free safety would play a real aggressive middle third technique, and we always tried to stem it the best we could, but he would play real aggressive in his middle third technique because you don't want him backpedaling out because you're sending six, and you're telling him that the ball's going to come out, and we want all eyes towards the cue. So it really wasn't a, a deep middle third technique. It was more, we always call it hot third. So we would show press man up here to get the throws. When you're, when you're, when you're showing and you're bringing six like that, you're trying to invite the throws that you want. So we would show press man, and then we would bail to a hot third, bail to a hot third, he would bail to a middle hot third, and we were trying to invite that, that fade throw. We were trying to invite, all right, if we got that slant throw, we were hoping that the vision and break guy staring at the quarterback, when the quarterback looked to that side adjust to that hot throw, we were hoping that we have a guy sitting right off the quarterback's movement and his eyes and his front shoulder. So we were hoping that we'd be good with the ball coming out quick. We taught our kids that the ball would come out quick. And we were hoping that in that theory, okay, with the ball coming out quick, our free safety can be a lot more aggressive than he normally is because hopefully the ball doesn't have a chance to push itself down the deep middle. Now, as he, as he kind of backed out, we play him tighter at about eight, and we slow backpedal him out. As he clears through run to quick game, and it might be drop back pass, well, now he's got to kind of get out and get in that middle third. But when you're sending six, you're hoping that it never gets to that. All right, so uh, six-man hot pressures was one of the ways that Kirby Smart talked about generating tackles for loss. And for us, when I go back and look at it, after watching that video with Kirby Smart, I went back and watched our defense, and most of our tackles for losses come from similar theories. All right, so we use a six-man uh, six pressure, a hot pressure three over two. All right, and when we do it, we make it real simple. All right, you can get as exotic as you want, but when I do it, I always blitz my three LBs and my two, what you would call your apex, my left safety, right safety, they're always the hot players. So this way, when we call the hot coverage, the same guys, I don't have to teach multiple guys how to play it. The same guys play the hot coverage, the same six guys blitz. The only thing you do is you just change the tracks of the blitz. So when we go hot pressure, it's the same three backers involved blitzing. It's the same two safeties being hot, and it's the same free safety to the middle. Now, have we done other pressures like this and rotated with different hot guys? Yes, we have. I'm not saying we haven't. This past year, we went to this system where we kept it mainly six-man pressure with the three backers going, same hot players, same technique for everybody, and they're playing the same coverage all the time. Okay? So the next thing for us, and again, like I said, Jamming the B gap and, and stunting to take away the open B gap for us. I have two open B gaps, so my tackle for losses were generated more on my five and six man pressures, and I know that 
a lot of people are going to say, well, coach, that's logical. You're sending more guys. I'm just showing you where we got the most out of our tackle for losses. And what I have written up here is you have to be aggressive because I've talked several times on other videos stating how on defense I'm going to play base defense first and I'm going to teach a base defensive philosophy before we ever get crazy moving all over the place and before we ever get crazy you know, adding guys into the pressure and doing those things. I'm going to play base first. Well, eventually when you're trying to get tackles for loss, you've got to be able to get aggressive. You've got to be able to gamble and know when you want to gamble based on down and distance and calls and tendencies. And you've got to take some chances if you're looking to get tackles for losses and guys behind the sticks. So you have to be aggressive. So all these calls lent to us being in some type of aggressive mode or aggressive nature. All right, so five-man trap pressures for us, which we consider or we call them, you know, we're playing really too deep. Uh, you know, we're playing two over four, losing an underneath guy, and then we're tra kind of trapping the flat with our corners. So that's what I consider for us trap pressures. I know there's other versions of trap stuff out there. For me, it's a two deep structure with four under two deep and two vertical hook players, and I'm kind of losing uh, the fifth underneath player in a cover two structure, but I'm sending, I'm adding a guy. So we would use America's Blitz on, on this track right here. So we'd go long stick there, Mike there. All right, off the edge there. We trap the flat with the corner. He'd be a half player. All right, we would trap the flat with the corner. Half player, vertical hook here, vertical hook here. He technically becomes a B gap player there, so we're fitting the run. He's an extra fitter in the run. A, B, C gap, all right, are, are taken up. There's nowhere for him to fold inside, so RPO shouldn't be an issue. He can hang here. The ball should get sent to him. And then if it gets even wider and he gets blocked by a number two, you got a corner. That is playing real aggressive, trying to trap to beat, hopefully, the blocks of number one. So you have a force player to each side. So it gaps us out up front. We get a force player to each side. We like running it from the field more often than not so that we try to force the ball back into the boundary. Okay, so we play it as a trap coverage, but we use it with America's path the most. Sometimes as a changeup, I'll mug the mic up there. All right, I'll mug the mic and send him first and let the end of the anchor come second behind him. So we've changed the track of that up, but we use our five-man trap pressures with, um, with the America's Blitz pattern, if you're familiar with what that is. We use it with that pattern from the field with trap coverage to generate TFLs. And to be honest with you, from our normal two-read look, we generated a bunch of tackles for loss this year getting back outs or bubbles with a hard trigger that this guy is not expecting him to trigger that way. And we made a couple really, really nice plays on either that stand-up screen or possibly this stand-up screen with this guy working out to block him and him becoming a trap guy. We had a lot of, a lot of uh, quality tackles for loss. Almost, I would say, six to seven this season we had were this corner, and it was five of them were the same player because he was really good at it, where we trapped the flat and on bubble theories or you know possible fade-out theories, okay, and a fade out for us wouldn't be a tackle for a loss, so that's why I'm discussing more of the bubble, back out, or stand up, because we're talking about TFLs. We got a lot of mileage out of this trap corner off of our normal two-read look because there's throws they think they can make off of our two-read alignment, and then when you trap the flat that hard, they're not expecting it, and then it gave us a way to use the America's Blitz pattern, which has been good to everybody for years. So we would use the America's Blitz pattern with trap two coverage behind it, and not only in the run game, but in the pass game with some backups, some stand-ups, and some bubbles. Because some of those things might even be sighted just where the quarterback sees pressure coming, backers creeping, and he raises up to throw an access throw or a gift that he thinks he's getting. And because the coverage has changed, all of a sudden you're getting that thing trapped. And then the last one for us is kind of a combination man-zone type deal. All right, where we might be able to play our normal zone theories or matching zone theories to a trip side and then we might be able to generate pressure from the back side all right so we might we might be able to go with some type of deal where we are we are going you know maybe we might even just plug it with the stack in the B the mic in the A all right, and now we're going to play man on this backside if there's a number two. So this left safety is going to have a two out man, or he's going to have a four or five push if they push this way and, and the ram. Because on this side, we're going to play our mixed coverage, which if you watch any of our videos before, our mixed coverage is man on number one to the trips. And now we're playing 
our normal two read or palms defense on two and three with our safeties. All right, so we're reading off a two and three with our free safety and our left or right safety. Sorry, that should be right safety. And then our ram backer, all right, he's a palm drop, our guy. Don't let three cross your face. Don't let four out leverage you. Technically, if you take this guy and say he's man to man, then you could treat this as a number one, number two, and a back of number three. His rule never changes from how he plays his normal palms coverage in our base defense against two remove. So if the back is over here, he's really going to hang heavy inside of number three because we cannot let three get across the formation if we're playing man on the backside. So if we get some type of combination where they're running some type of pick deal here and a wheel route, if he's man and he's man and these guys are blitzing, this three or that two, nobody between this two and the three, whoever comes, they cannot get across the formation. Because if they get across the formation, we're going to have a little bit of an issue. Okay? And then if the back was on this side, then all we got to do is be able to relate the push because now if he goes wide and he pushes... All right, what we've got to do is we've got to teach this guy who was playing man on the back. Now that the back's over there, we're going to have to replace that push. When he pushes, you've now got to replace him so you can take the first thing coming back because he's going to widen with that back going out. So we get a five-man blitz. We get a pattern on the back side that we like. We have also done this three different ways now. On the back side of three by one, we have done this three different ways. We've done this with the safety. So we've done this with a Mike in the A and Jam in the B and a safety off the edge with him as a man player. Okay? And then we have also we have also done this as a corner pressure. And again as a corner pressure it would be Jam B gap, Mike in the A, corner coming. Rotate that left safety over to play man on one, play that. Lion man on two or push four or five, push strong if you got the back strong on the back side of three by one. Okay, so this gives us a five-man pressure while it allows us to play. We are still playing four over three to the trip side. So we're not playing man free. We're not playing three under three deep. We're not playing trap. We're four over three to the field side or the formation side. And then we are a combination because we're man. So we get a five-man combination pressure because we have our field side coverage, all right, which is our zone principles, four over three. And then we have our backside, which becomes man-to-man -man on the number one and the number two. Okay, so um, hopefully this helps you guys out trying to generate tackles for loss. You have to be aggressive. We always start with base defense first. This is never a way we enter <coughs> Excuse me, a season teaching a defense. It's not how we do it. We teach base first. And then when we know when we're playing a, a, a better team that we got to get behind the sticks or we're playing a good offense and we got to get behind the sticks, we know what we're going to go to within our, within our pressures. We know what we like in the run game. We know what we like that's an aggressive call, but we should be able to stay safe. All right, if you notice, none of these calls are aggressive straight man or man-free calls. They all involve some type of zone concept behind them, which makes them a little safer in nature. So you're playing really aggressive, but you're still saying sound or, you know, man-to-man -man coverage is sound. I'm not saying it's unsound, but it's a gamble. So when you're playing these types of deals, sending five or six to get tackles for losses and still being able to play zone, uh, zone coverages behind it, I think it's a benefit because it's an aggressive mindset while still saying I feel comfortable and I feel okay because I'm not dogged out in man-to-man -man coverage in the pass game or run support in, in the run game because those guys run verticals or RPO theories. i got to cover them, and now I might be a little bit shorter in the run game. All right, so hopefully this video helps you uh, think about how you're going to generate tackle for losses, things you need to think about when you're generating tackles for losses. Make sure you check out some of our other sponsors like Just Play Football, which is the uh, playbook so uh, software that I use to diagram plays when I'm talking at webinars, when I'm speaking at uh, clinics or doing webinars. I use Just Play Football as my digital software and my only drawing tool, diagramming tool that I use. All right, Defensive Coordinator One is an in-game app that allows you to make critical adjustments based on the live data that's happening in the game. So you've got a template plugged in. You've got your calls plugged in, your personnel, the calls you made, their personnel, their formations, calls you made, and what was good against what, what wasn't good against what, and now you can make your adjustments based on live 
in-game data instead of just tendencies or things that you think are happening. You're making adjustments based on things that are actually happening. And then Dome Hats, uh, it's a major sponsor of Play Fast Football. This is our white Play Fast Football hat by Dome with our Play Fast logo on the back. All right, Dome's a local company here in Northeast Florida. Uh, two former Florida Gator football players. Uh, great customer service, custom online hat builder. Um, you know, every hat has a story. Dome wants to help you tell that story with a hat. Every, you know, a lot of athletic programs use hats. Why not use a company that understands your needs, knows how to meet your needs, has a great custom online hat builder. So if you're working across the country, you know, they can do business anywhere they want, even though they're located here in Northeast Florida. And they're a major uh, sponsor of our first Play Fest football clinic coming up in about 15 days now, and they're going to be there. So if you're going to be at the clinic, make sure you check them out. As always, I need you guys to subscribe. If you like what's going on, click that, notif turn the notifications on, and then click the bell to get a ring. Every time we do a video, you'll know. All right, thumbs up or thumbs down. If you like or don't like the video, it lets us know what content to do. Comment on the videos. I will always respond back to your comments on the videos. It helps us interact, stay engaged with the audience, and it also helps us understand the content that you want to see. All right, I appreciate everything that you guys have done for me the last seven years, doing bigger and better things in 2020. All right, so make sure you stay tuned and check out what's going on. we got a lot of things coming up that we're really excited about. So thank you to you guys. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast. I'll see you guys next time.